In today's lesson, I'm gonna show you 12 techniques to spice up your bass lines and make them way more interesting than just following the root note of your chord. You can use all of these 12 techniques, you can use a combination of some of them, or you can use none of them at all. It depends on the vibe that you're going for, but it's a good idea to have these tools in your pack so you can use them if needs be. So we're gonna go from a bass line like this, And if we use all of these techniques, we can end up with a bass line like this. Now, as I said, it might be inappropriate to use all of the tricks. You might just want to use number two, number six, or maybe you want to use five, eight, and nine. But stick around and watch them all because then at least you've got them in your toolkit if and when you want to use them. Quick shout out to our Accelerator student, Jack Parker, who joined us about a year and a half ago, really nervous, hadn't really finished any music, and he's just had his latest track played on BBC Radio, which is a huge win. I'm going to link to it below. And I've got to say hats off to you, Jack. You've put the work in and got the results. Anyway, without further ado, let's hop into the door and I'm going to show my 12 ways to spice up your bass patterns. Okay, so we're going to start out with the standard bass line. That's just following the chord progression. Which is kind of nice, but we want to look at the different ways to spice it up. So the first is to use my eighth shift technique. And if we can see, we've got our grid set to eighths. So there are four beats in a bar, one, two, three, four. And you can see the grid is double that resolution. Now, if we move over the beginning of some of these notes by an eighth, and let's just make sure there's only one playing at a time, like this, then it's going to push that groove forwards. And listen to what happens when this bass note's coming just before the beat. Just keeps that groove going. And you can actually push some of them back as well. So I'm going to push this one back by three eighths and then make this bass note reach it. And now let's listen to what's happening. Just pushes that groove forward. Right, way better. Okay, onto my spicing up technique number two. And that is adding syncopation. Now we're gonna use 16ths for this, and this works particularly well with pluck basses rather than re basses. So I'm just gonna make this a bit shorter like this. And what you can do is using the 16th grid, you can just skip two sixteenths each time like this. So skip, skip there, skip, skip there, skip, skip there, skip, skip there. And we can copy that for our other bass notes too. So let's just take that down to the C and we can take it down to the A as well. And you can combine these techniques as well. You don't need to use just one or the other. Um, and let's just double that one up to there. And then we're gonna put these ones up here. And now listen to the bass line we've added this syncopation to. So it's just way funkier, but again, it depends on the genre that you are producing and the effects that you want to create. But for this, I would probably add a little bit of extra release, just so these notes are a little bit longer. So let's go to my volume envelope. So it's a completely different vibe, but that's a way to spice up your bass lines as well. Okay, on to number three, and that is separating the sub bass from the mid bass. And there are a couple of reasons for that, and it's more for processing than the actual spiciness. But sometimes if your bass line goes really low, like this, let's just take it all down an octave. Like when we get down here, we're losing a lot of that energy. So, if we split this into two different bases, so I'm just going to duplicate that. Now for the mid bass, what I'm going to do is turn off my sub oscillator. I'm also going to put an EQ rolling off the low end under about 100, 120 hertz. So that means the sub bass isn't going to be doubled up. So now our main bass sounds like this. And there's actually some phase cancellation, but if we take out the low end and have a separate sub bass track like this, that doesn't matter so much because it's only when the sub frequencies phase cancel each other that the problems really start to arise in the bass line because it just drops in volume and energy and we want that really nice solid sub bass. So if we've separated out like this, I'm just gonna take off that little bit of bass reverb, open up that version of Serum. Now I'm gonna turn off the other oscillators and just leave the sub 
oscillator. So now we've got this effect. But here is where we're losing energy with the sub bass. Now, not only do you not run into the phase cancellation issues if you've got a nice mono sub bass, we can also bump them up an octave if needs be. If it goes down really low and we're losing that sub power, we can just notch this up an octave. And we're going to leave our mid bass playing what it was. So that's impossible if you've got the bass line all in one instrument. And now let's listen to our bass. With our sub bass, it's going to jump up here. So now let's just do a comparison. So this is the lowest bass point that we have, and now we've got the sub bass and the mid bass separated out. So I'm just going to turn off the sub bass and then go back to having the sub bass within the main bass. Listen to that. So for comparison, now listen to the power. So that's why separating out your sub bass is great and I recommend it to everyone. Okay, for my next tip, I have reverted back to our original bass line and I've added in the chords of the track as well. So let's have a listen to it at the moment. So our bass line follows the root notes of the chords perfectly, but we don't have to do that. We can spice things up a bit. And again, it depends on the genre and the vibe that you're trying to create, but it's worth experimenting with. And this is something that Calvin Harris is superb at, and it just creates a funky vibe. So as I said, you don't have to use the root of the track. And the easiest way to do this is to use this scale button in whatever door you're using. There's usually something similar. Put in whichever scale you're in, and this track's in E minor natural. And then you can press the scale button, and then it's going to give you a template. And when you are experimenting with notes that aren't the root note of the chord, thirds, fifths, and sevenths are usually good places to try experimenting with. So, so that's the third. And let's try this last one instead of the B, which is the root of the chord. We're going to go to the F sharp. So now let's listen to the vibe. So it adds a little bit of kind of Disc a little bit of discomfort or a little bit of tension is probably a better word and it can create a really nice jazzy feel. So that's my next tip, number four. Number five, we are going to move on to the 80-20 rule. And this is something I got from the guys at Hook Theory. I just like the way that they explained it. And it's moving away from the root note of the chord, but using a particular ratio because if the note doesn't hit the root enough or the bass doesn't underpin the track enough, it can get confusing and the listener doesn't really know what's going on. And if you've got a melody as well, if you've got too much interest in the bass line, that can take away from the melody. So if we go back to the root notes like this, if we want to use this 80-20 rule and move away from the root note, we can add some interest. And again, this works for different styles, but this can be quite good if you're creating a, a funky style. So I'm just going to create a bit of a funky riff. And again, I'm working on the 16th, so I'm adding the syncopation we looked at earlier, but I'm also moving away from the root note now, so we're kind of combining them. So we've got 80% here on the root, and then we're moving off the root for 20%, and that's still going to give us enough power or enough root note to, to keep it locked in. Try this. I'm just going to fast forward this bit and then I'm going to copy that same pattern as well just to keep things recognizable. I'll turn off the LFO tool as well so we can really hear it. 
Now we're going to keep developing this idea out and now we're going to add the octave jump in as well. And if you are creating a funkier bass line, this can really just add interest just by dropping or raising notes an octave. Like so. Again, it depends on which genre you're producing, but that's a nice way to spice up your bass patterns as well. Okay, on to the next, which is tweaking the note length. So if we make this all legato, all of these notes are gonna be completely running into each other like so. Which is absolutely fine, but sometimes, just tweaking that where the note end happens can just add a little bit of extra funk or a little bit of extra interest, which can be really important to creating the vibe because it's what you don't include that's as important as what you do include when it comes to music. So if we want this to be a little funky bit here. So we're leaving little gaps in between some of the notes. And we can follow those patterns as well and just copy them into the second half for continuity. Because again, continuity is important and repetition of pattern. So people don't get uh, overwhelmed by uh, just completely random notes, basically. So now let's listen to it. Now we tweak some of these note ends. Even the ones that are really close together like this, we can just tweak them a tiny bit. They don't have to be much of a shortened length, but just that tiny bit of space can add just what you need. And with the chords, So for this bass line, and I'm kind of going off on one here, what I'm actually going to do is ju I'm just going to double this up and I'm going to call this funky bass because I think we need something with a bit more staccato to it. So this is kind of a lesson on layering and you can check out my video on layering that's just popping up now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to contact and this is a bonus bit. I might even edit this out, but who knows? This is what happens here. I kind of go off on one. Let me know if you're enjoying it so far, guys. Give me a hell yeah or an amen, brother, if you are feeling holy. Okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to get the Rickenbacker bass because it's Rickenbacker badass. Uh, so let's just get this on there. And I'm going to just layer this in really quietly. This is it on its own. I'm going to put this up an octave though. And I'm going to take out the low end. because it's just that texture I want. Okay, let's try now. Anyway, that's a little bit of bonus layering there. So I'll take that off for the next tip, which is doo -doo -doo -doo, adding flourishes. So we've kind of already done this because we funked things up. But if we go back to our original bass line, if you do have a re-space, you obviously don't want to overdo 
the you know the flourishes because it's going to reduce that vibe that you're going for so if we go back to the original vibe it was something more along these lines but if we wanted to just add a bit of that funky flourish let's double up this length and we're just going to add it on the second eighth, the second time it loops around. So then it might sound more like this. Rather than just looping exactly the same, we're going to have that little bass flourish in there. And you could have it at the end as well. So that is how you can spice things up as well. Okay, on to the next, and that is using envelopes. So again, this is more of the sound rather than the pattern itself. But if you wanted to make things a bit more interesting, you can tweak the envelope in your bass so it's not the same every time. So if we create a filter envelope on this bass line, let's just solo it, so it sounds like this. We've already got a bass envelope there actually, but I'm just gonna increase the attack on this. Okay, we've already got an LFO applied, so I'm just gonna remove that. So I've just added that envelope to open up that filter, which creates that effect. But we don't have to have that same envelope on every beat. If we want to just add more dynamicism to the track, we could open, uh, we could drag an LFO and apply that to the attack on that envelope and just have it gently uh, tweak it as that. So every bass hit has a slightly different envelope. So that's just another way to spice things up. Okay, now on to the eight bar switch. So if we've got our four bar loop and it just runs through, as we've already shown here, we can change things in the second part of the loop in the second section, just to make things more interesting. But not only can we add these flour flourishes, sorry, we could also use what we used earlier, which was not hitting that root note. So now we've got our bass line that runs through, but then the second time, the second note of that bass line doesn't hit the root note of the chord. We are jumping up to, I believe it was the fifth of that chord as we looked at earlier. So now let's listen to it. Just following the root notes. So that adds some more interest, but now I want to change this bit just because I get I've got the vibes. It's just a little run down there. Yes, I love that. Okay, on to the next, and this is the pitch bend. So we're almost there, but this one is really cool as well. And again, it doesn't matter which genre you're, well, it does matter which genre you're producing, but it's really about which vibe you want. Now, this is just adding pitch bend to add more movement to your bass. Now, what I would always recommend that you do is in whatever instrument you're using for your bass, change the pitch bend range to be plus 12, and minus 12 and that means whenever you do a full pitch bend it's going to be exactly one octave that you 
bend either up or down and that's going to avoid your bass kind of sounding out of tune. So if we open up our envelope here and choose MIDI control pitch bend, let's see what happens or rather hear what happens when we just add these little pitch bends now and again. Listen how much more interesting that sounds straight away. And then we'll pitch bend up here an octave. Now you don't have to use it this much. You might just have one pitch bend or you might have no pitch bends, but it's just an option to add more interest to your track. So nice. Okay, on to the next, and this is call and response. And this is particularly good if you are producing something like Trance 2.0 for Anjuna Beats, something where there's two different bass lines. But the trouble with two different bass lines is sometimes they can clash with each other. So in this example, what we're going to do is just have these bass lines kind of switch out and we're gonna have two. So we've got these bass notes. So what we're going to do is create a second bass line, a second bass patch, and I'm just going to go for a random one. I'm going to go for Spire and see what bass patches they have in there. Let's just find something interesting. I don't have my keyboard set up, so we're just going to have to hope that sounds kind of good. <laughs> and then we'll open up our MIDI and have a listen. Okay, cool. So we're going to use that quite aggressive sound. And remember, we're using the techniques that we were looking at all through this exercise, but now we're going to add a second bass. Now, when you have something like that, this is when we need to make sure that we don't have both basses playing at the same time, because then it can add too much build up in the low end. So we can zoom in and we can just cut it out like this for that bit of bass. But then we need to make sure this one triggers. So let's have a listen. Yeah, but then we need to make sure this bass note actually triggers again like so. And we can duplicate that bass. And what we're going to do is cut this one out and then just leave that one different bass note there. And this is when you get all that glitchy stuff when you're listening to modern trance, which can sound really cool. But we're just going to find a different bass. Again, we want something quite plucky. Don't know what this will sound like. Bit of a reverse bass, that sounds cool actually. So we're going to leave that one there like this. Take this one out. Cool. Now let's find a different one for that. Here we go. Yeah, that's cool. So now we've got these three different bases. And if we continue this throughout the whole pattern, they're going to kind of talk to each other in a call and response type effect. But let's just loop this bit and hear what it sounds like. That's cool. 
So we're not overcomplicating the trap by having multiple basses all playing at the same time. We're just kind of cool and responsing, chopping between them. So yeah, there are some of my best techniques for switching up your bass line, for spicing things up and making things more interesting than just following the root notes of your chords, which can be a bit boring sometimes. So I hope you enjoy that. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel and like this video it really helps me out. And thank you for watching. Till next time, cheers and happy producing. Thank you.